deal with the present and to make clear statements about when and how we might settle the next time we deal with it. And so I said, I've never said this to my kids or to them. And I do not know where I'm at right now. Um, and they hate that. In Margaretville. In Margaretville, that's Yeah, it's about 45 minutes up from Towney. And Woodstock and all that. Oh, I know where Woodstock is. Yeah, yeah, Woodstock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I Good for Dave. Well, yeah. <laughs> my husband at the time, he had been there for a while. So oh, okay, yeah. You know, the, the whole world. The whole thing, yeah. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Councilmember Matthew Eugene, and I'm the chair of the Civil and Human Rights Committee. Today, the committee will be voting on introduction number 339B, sponsored by Councilmember Debbie Rose, which expands protection under the city human rights law to domestic workers. There are an estimated 2.5 million domestic workers in the United States which is one of the nation's fastest growing professions. As domestic worker is often intermittent, isolated, and perform for very small employees, such as an individual family, domestic workers are uniquely vulnerable to abuse, including sexual harassment, assault, and various forms of discrimination. Domestic workers also belong to a vulnerable population in the workforce, as 95% of domestic workers are women and 54% identified as non right In the recent survey of domestic workers, over 80% reported that they have worked in an abusive situation. Despite the rampant violations, they have been limited the legal resources and law for domestic workers. In 2010, the New York State Human Rights Law was amended to protect domestic workers from sexual and discriminatory harassment, but domestic workers did not receive the full employment protection of the state human rights law. Similarly, New York City's human rights law only applied to employers with four or more employees. Therefore, domestic workers who are often employed in private homes by those who have few employees are left vulnerable without many of the city's human rights protection. In 2018, the City Council passed Law 1998, which removed the four employee requirement for gender based harassment claim. Today, will be voting on intro 339B, which would amend the New York City, City Human Rights Law to extend employee protections to domestic workers, regardless of the number of staff employed. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge uh, the members of the committee who are with us today. Today we have uh, Council Member Baron. Thank you very much, Council Member. Council Member John. Thank you very much. Council Member Linder, thank you. Council Member Parkins, thank you very much. And we have with us also the sponsor of this wonderful uh, legislation, Council Member Rose, and also Council Member uh, Witch. Thank you so very much. And now I would like to invite Council Member Rose to deliver uh, a statement. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Chair Eugene. Today we will vote on vote to pass intro 339, which will grant protections for domestic workers under the human rights law. New York City's human rights law is one of the most expansive human rights laws in the country and is intended to be more liberally construed than similar state and federal laws. The law provides protections to employees and prospective employees from discrimination in the workplace. 
In 2011, it was brought to my attention, however, that the law is not, in fact, being construed liberally, and that there are people who are not afforded protections from discrimination. Intro 339 would otherwise apply the entirety of the human rights law to domestic workers, including discrimination in hiring, firing, promotions, and all employment decisions based on all protected categories, race, gender, disability, and obligations related to pregnancy and other medical accommodations, as well as sexual harassment, which would include training for the employer and the obligation to disclose rights of the employee upon hearing, hiring. I'm really proud to be here today on behalf of all of the domestic workers who have been in unprotected status for far too long. So domestic workers and healthcare workers across the state are moments away from being protected as all other employees currently are. I wanna thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his leadership, his steadfast dedication to the people of our city and his support of this bill. I also wanna thank Jason Goldman um, who is Chief of Staff. I'd like to thank Issa Cortez, my Legislative and Budget Director, who has fervently worked over the years to get this bill passed. And I wanna thank Edwina Francis Martin, my previous Legislative and Budget Director, who recognized that the human rights law excluded protections for so many workers back in 2011. I wanna thank Jay Shri, Ganapathy, um, who's the counsel to the Civil and Human Rights Committee, Rachel Cordero, and Marissa Centino, who is the co-director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance, as well as everybody else who is a part of the Domestic Workers Alliance, my colleagues, and all of the domestic workers and healthcare workers across the state. Chair Eugene, I thank you so much for bringing this bill to the floor for a vote. And um, I know that the domestic workers are also very thankful and grateful for this bill being heard today, being passed hopefully today. Thank you so very much, Councilmember Rose, and congratulations. I think I have acknowledged uh, Councilmember Perkins, but if I didn't, let me do it again. Councilmember Bill Perkins. Thank you very much, my brother, thank you. And uh, before we, uh, I call the vote, I would like also to thank committee staff, uh, Jaya Sri Ganapati, counsel to the committee, William Yuri, policy analyst, and Jack Ken, finance analyst, as well as my staff, uh, Melissa Whitson. Now I would like to ask Mr. Clark to call the vote. To call, uh, please uh, call the roll, please. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on civil and human rights, introduction, proposed introduction 339B, Chair Eugene. Avorai. Barron. Uh, thank you, I wanna commend the sponsor of this bill, glad to be a co-sponsor and I vote aye. Drum. I vote aye. Lander. I want to give just really special uh, props for this fight to Councilmember Debbie Rose, who's been pushing for this bill for all years, including in the last term as well as this one, standing with domestic workers, some of the, 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 the people who need human rights protections the most and in New York City have had it the least. And you've really, they've shown up in organizing over and over and you've had their back. And I just want to give you and them big props on today's bill. I vote aye. Perkins. Councilmember Perkins votes aye. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero with a negative, and no abstention, item has been adopted by the committee. Mr. Chair, that is a full committee. Thank you so very much, Mr. Clay. Thank you very, very much. This meeting is adjourned.
Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you.